We'll come to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Senators, Bridges. Bridges. Absent. <laughs> Buckner. Present. Coleman. <laughs> Cook. <laughs> Corum. <Morning>. Danielson. <laughs> Morning. Donovan. Here. You can't find someone who's absent. Donovan. Come on. Excused. Fields. Gardner. Gardner. Absent. Oh. Janal. Gonzalez. Hansen. Henriksen. Heisey. Holbert. Jaquez Lewis. Kirkmeyer. Kolker. Lee, Liston, Lundin, Moreno, Pedersen, Priola, Rankin, Rodriguez, Scott, Simpson, Smallwood, Sonnenberg, Sonnenberg, excused. Story. Here. Winter. Woodward. Zenzinger. Here. Bridges. Cole. Gardner. <laughs> Sonnenberg. Donovan. Mr. President. Here. By the grace of God, the morning roll call is 35 present. Good job, everybody. Zero absent, zero excused. We have a quorum. Will the good senator from Arapahoe County please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I mean, if I'm not here, I can't. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval of the journal, Senator Winter. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the approval of the jur journal of Monday, April 25th, 2022, be approved as corrected by the secretary. You have heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and that motion is adopted. <laughs> Members, please welcome the one and only Matt Jones back to the chamber.
Senate services. Correctly printed, Senate Bill 227, 228, 229, 230, correctly engrossed, Senate Bill 197 and 215, correctly re-engrossed, Senate Bills 159, 165, 168, 181 and 182, 192, 212 and 214, correctly, re -revi correctly revised, House Bills 1103, 1154, 1157, 1210, 1232, 1241, 1261, 1263, 1268, 1298, 1299 and 1313, House Concurrent Resolution 1005, correctly re-revise House Bill 1291, correctly enrolled Senate Bill 34, Senate Memorial 2. Committee reports. April 25th, 2022, Committee on Health and Human Services. After consideration on the merits, the committee recommends the following. Senate Bill 219 be amended as follows, and as so amended, be referred to the Committee on Finance with favorable recommendation. April 25th, 2022, Committee on Health and Human Services. After consideration on the merits, the committee recommends the following. Senate Bill 177 be amended as follows, and as so amended, be referred to the Committee on Appropriations with favorable recommendation. <laughs> April 25th, 2022, the Committee on Health and Human Services. After consideration on the merits, the committee recommends the following. Senate Bill 200 be amended as follows, and as so amended, be referred to the Committee on Appropriations with favorable recommendation. <laughs> April 25th, 2022, the Committee on Health and Human Services. After consideration on the merits, the committee recommends the following. House Bill 1302 be amended as follows, and as so amended, be referred to the Committee on Appropriations with favorable recommendation. Third reading of bills, consent calendar. Will the clerk please read the titles to all of the bills on the consent calendar? House Bill 1210, Representatives Betavides and Durant, Senators Winter, concerning the continuation of the Domestic Violence Offender Management Board and in connection therewith implementing the recommendations contained in the 2021 Sunset Report by the Department of Regulatory Agencies in making an appropriation. House Bill 1261, Representatives Roberts and Rick, Senators Hansen and Priola, concerning the continuation of the Board of Real Estate Appraisers and in connection therewith, implementing the recommendations contained in the 2021 Sunset Report by the Department of Regulatory Agencies regarding the Board of Real Estate Appraisers. House Bill 1263, Representative Kennedy, Senator Buckner, concerning the continuation of licensing requirements for acupuncturists. House Bill 1268, Representatives Holtorf and Amabile, Senators Janal and Simpson, concerning reporting of Medicaid reimbursement rates paid to mental health providers. And House Bill 1299, Representative Young, Senators Kolker and Fields, concerning a transfer from the General Fund to the Division of Professions and Occupations Cash Fund in the 2022-23 state fiscal year to facilitate fee relief for mental health professionals regulated by boards in the Department of Regulatory Agencies. Majority Leader Moreno. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the passage of all the bills on the third reading of bills consent calendar, which includes House Bills 1210, 1261, 
1263, 1268, and 1299. Is there any discussion on any of the bills? Seeing none, the motion is the passage of all of the bills and the third reading of bill's consent calendar. Are there any no votes? Senator Smallwood. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to be recorded as a no vote on House Bill 1299. Senator Smallwood will be recorded as a no vote on House Bill 1299. Senator Lundin. Thank you, Mr. President. I request to be recorded as a no vote on House Bill 1210 and 1299. Senator Lundin will be a no on 1210 and 1299. Senator Woodward. Thank you, Mr. President. I wish to be recorded as a no on 1299. Senator Woodward will be recorded as a no vote on 1299. Senator Liston. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I would like to be recorded as a no vote on House Bill 1210 and 1299. Thank you. Senator Liston will, will be recorded as a no vote on 1210 and 1299. Minority Leader Holbert. Thank you, Mr. President. I don't want to be left out, so I'd like to be uh, recorded as a no vote on 1299. Minority Leader will be recorded as a no vote on 1299. Senator Kirkmeyer. Thank you, Mr. President. I, too, would like to be recorded as a no vote on House Bill 1299. Senator Kirkmeyer will be recorded as a no vote on 1299. With a vote of 35 ayes, 0 noes, 0 absent, 0 excused, House Bill 1210 is passed. Co-sponsors, Senators Rodriguez, Lee, Buckner. Colker, Gonzalez, Jaquez Lewis, Fields, Majority Leader Moreno, Janal, Donovan, Hansen, Zenzinger, Pedersen, Story, <coughs> with a vote of 35 ayes, 0 no, 0 absent, 0 excused. House Bill 1261 is passed. Co-sponsors. With a vote of 35 ayes, 0 no, 0 absent, 0 excused. House Bill 1263 is passed. Co-sponsors. Senators Gonzalez. Jaquez Lewis, Janal, Lee, with a vote of 35 ayes, 0 no, 0 absent, 0 excused, House Bill 1268 is passed. Co-sponsors, Senator Zenzinger, Jaquez Lewis, Majority Leader Moreno, Hendrickson, Rodriguez, Lee, Kolker, Kirkmeyer, Sonnenberg, Liston. Please add the president. With a vote of 29 ayes, 6 no, 0 absent, 0 excused, House Bill 1299 is passed. Co-sponsors, Senators Henriksen, Majority Leader Moreno, Sonnenberg, Gonzalez, Buckner, Lee, Rodriguez, Fields, Hansen, Story, Quorum. Pedersen. Please add the president. <laughs> oh no, I'm going to say boy. <laughs> Just a correction. Um, uh, the vote count on House Bill 1210 was 33 ayes, 2 noes, 0 absent, 0 excused.
third reading of bills, final passage. Will the clerk please read the title to House Bill 1031. House Bill 1031, Representative Satone and Ortiz, Senator Zenzinger and Cook, concerning a requirement that a powered wheelchair manufacturer facilitate the repair of its powered wheelchairs by providing certain other persons with the resources needed to repair the manufacturer's powered wheelchairs. Senator Zenzinger. Thank you, Mr. President. I move House Bill 1031, and then I'm going to pause. Pause has been noted. Senator Cook. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, we are going to request permission for a third reading amendment. Will you please explain yourself, Senator Cook? Thank you, Mr. President. Um, even though this is almost perfect bill and a great bill, we forgot to do it on seconds. <laughs> so we are asking to do it on thirds. And, and you mean the, the royal we? <laughs> yes, the royal. Senator Cook messed up. <laughs> right. That's what I meant. Uh, the question before the body is the request for permission to offer a third reading amendment. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no? <laughs> the ayes have it and permission is granted. Will the clerk please read amendment L004. Amendment L004 by Senator, Senator Cook. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I move L004. And what this does, it states perfectly into law that a manufacturer is not held liable if a third party um, fixes a wheelchair or the uh, owner of the wheelchair fixes it and they get hurt. It, it states very clearly that they are not liable in any way for those repairs. Question before the body is the, pa uh, the adoption of uh, Amendment L004. <clears throat> um, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and L004 is adopted. To the bill. Get a move it though, again. Senator Cook. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. I renew my motion to uh, adopt House Bill 1031 and ask for an aye vote. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the motion before the body is the passage of House Bill 1031. Are there any no votes? Senators Smallwood, Minority Leader Holbert, Lundeen, Woodward, Gardner. With a vote of 30 ayes, 5 noes, 0 absent, 0 excuse, House Bill 1031 is passed. Co sponsors Senators Rodriguez, Henriksen, Bridges, Fields, Rankin. Majority Leader Moreno, Gonzalez, Kolker, Buckner, Hansen, Lee, Winter, Pedersen, Jaquez Lewis, Story, Danielson, Donovan. Will the clerk please read the title to House Bill 1157. House Bill 1157, Representatives McCormick and Tatone, Senator Hawkes Lewis, concerning the utilization of demographic health data by the Department of Public Health and Environment to address health inequities and in connection therewith, making an appropriation. Senator Hawkes Lewis. Thank you, Mr. President. I move House Bill 1157 on third reading and final passage. Is there any discussion? <clears throat> Seeing none, the motion is the passage of House Bill 1157 on third reading and final passage. Are there any no votes? Senators Sonnenberg, Heise, Simpson, Lundin, Gardner, Liston, Kirkmeyer, Rankin, Smallwood, Priola, Corum, Woodward, Scott, Cook, Minority Leader Holbert. With a vote of 20 ayes, 15 no, 0 absent, 0 excuse, House Bill 1157 is passed. Co-sponsors, Senators Zenzinger, Fields, Gonzalez, Majority Leader Moreno, Janal, Donovan, Hansen, Lee. Bridges, Winter, Buckner.
Please have the president. Will the clerk please read the title to House Bill 1232. House Bill 1232, Representative Valdez A. and Titone, Senators Gonzalez, concerning the continuation of the regulation of persons in connection with the control of asbestos and in connection there with implementing the recommendations of the Department of Regulatory Agencies contained in the 2021 Sunset Report. Senator Gonzalez. Thank you, Mr. President. I move to control asbestos by moving House Bill 1232 on third reading and final passage. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, the motion is the passage of House Bill 1232. Are there any no votes? Senators Sonnenberg, Heise, Lundin, Gardner, Liston, Simpson, Kirkmeyer, Corum, Rankin, Smallwood, Woodward, Scott, Cook, Minority Leader Holbert. With a vote of 21 ayes, 14 no, zero absent, zero excused, House Bill 1232 is passed. Co-sponsors, Senators Colker, Fields, Majority Leader Moreno, Rodriguez, Buckner, Lee, Story, Janal, Donovan, Jaquez Lewis, Winter. Will the clerk please read the title to Senate Bill 215. Senate Bill 215, Senators Hansen and Zenzinger, Representatives Herod and McCluskey concerning the creation of the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act cash fund to be used for non-federal match funding requirements for infrastructure projects eligible to receive federal funding under the Federal Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act and in connection therewith, making an appropriation. Senator Hansen. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the passage of Senate Bill 215 on third reading and final passage. Senator Zenzinger. Thank you, Mr. President. We just want to say thank you to the good Senator for Carbondale for making this bill better. Aw. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, the motion is the passage of Senate Bill 215. Are there any no votes? Senators Sonnenberg, Lundin, Minority Leader Holbert, Gardner, Liston, Woodward, Kirkmeyer, Smallwood. With a vote of 27 ayes, 8 no, 0 absent, 0 excused. Senate Bill 215 is passed. Co-sponsors. Senators Jaquez Lewis, Rankin, Majority Leader Moreno, Henriksen, Colker, Donovan, Buckner, Pedersen, Lee, Story, Gonzalez, Rodriguez, Winter. Please add the president. Will the clerk please read the title to House Concurrent Resolution 1005. House Concurrent Resolution 1005, Representatives Wiseman and Van Winkle, Senators Gardner and Field, submitting to the registered electors of the state of Colorado an amendment to the Colorado Constitution concerning judges of the newly created 23rd Judicial District and in connection therewith directing the governor to designate judges from the 18th Judicial District to serve the remainder of their terms in the 23rd Judicial District and requiring a judge so designated to establish residency within the 23rd Judicial District. Senator Fields. Thank you, Mr. President. We move HCR 22-10005 on third reading and final passage. Is there any discussion? Senator Gardner. Uh, thank you. Once again, thanks to Ms. Cole for taking a deep breath before reading that long title, and we ask for an I vote. The motion is the passage of HCR 1005. Are there any no votes? With a vote of 35 ayes, zero no, zero absent, zero excused, House, uh, House Concurrent Resolution 1005 passes. Co-sponsors, Minority Leader Holbert, Senators Lundin, Woodward, Smallwood, Liston, Donovan, Will the clerk please read the title to House Bill 1313. 
House Bill 1313, Representatives McCormick and Caraveo, Senator Moreno, concerning housing requirements for agricultural workers during a public health emergency. Majority Leader Moreno. Thank you, Mr. President. I move House Bill 1313 on third reading and final passage. Is there any discussion? See none. The motion is the passage of House Bill 1313. Are there any no votes? Senators, Minority Leader Holbert, Cook, Quorum. With a vote of 32 ayes, zero, three noes, zero abs, and zero excused, House Bill 1313 is passed. Co-sponsors, Senators Donovan, Jaquez Lewis, Henriksen, Fields, Gonzalez, Janal, Winter, Buckner, Story, Kolker, Rodriguez, Bridges, Sonnenberg, Pedersen, Smallwood. You move our move. Hmm? You want to move it? Sure. Lee, okay. please add the president. Zenzinger. Will the clerk please read the title to House Bill 1103? House Bill 1103, Representatives Exum and Rick, Senators Quorum and Fields, concerning the creation of a Delta Sigma Theta sorority special license plate in connection therewith, making an appropriation. Senator Quorum. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, we move House Bill 1103. Is there any discussion? Senator Quorum. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I just want to take the opportunity to talk about this because uh, it, it actually gives me great pride in my community. Um, in 1908, Bertha Pitts Campbell was the only black student in Montrose High School. She went on, she was raised by her grandmother. She went on to be valedictorian at Montrose High School, 1908. Had a scholarship to Colorado College, ended up going to Howard University, and started this sorority in 1913. And she's went on to be recognized as one of the great uh, people in America. She's been honored by in uh, Washington State, and uh, I am truly honored to carry this legislation in memory of Bertha Pitts Campbell and the community she was raised in. Senator Fields. Thank you, um, Mr. Chair, and I want to thank um, my good senator here for acknowledging um, my sister as it relates to the sorority. Um, she was a member of Delta Sigma Theta, which was established at Howard University. And if you know anything about sororities, there's all kinds of sororities. I'm a member of sorority, but um, it's the sisterhood that brings us all together. It's not about the pen. It's about the legacy of service that the organization does. So I stand in strong support and urge and I vote on third readings on this House Bill um, 1103. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the motion is the passage of House Bill 1103. Are there any no votes? Senators Sonnenberg. Lundin, Woodward, Minority Leader Holbert. With a vote of 31 ayes, four noes, zero absent, zero excused, House Bill 1103 is passed. Co-sponsors, Senators Zenzinger, Buckner, Coleman, Gonzalez. Please have the president. Story. Will the clerk please read the title to House Bill 1154. House Bill 1154, Representatives McLaughlin and Valdez D. Senator Decorum concerning the creation of a Colorado Rotary license plate in connection therewith making an appropriation. Senator Corum. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I move House Bill 1154. Is there any discussion? Senator Corum. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, uh, 
wasn't here yesterday to talk about this, but I was able to explain to the good member who is the former sheriff in Weld County that a rotary license plate doesn't do this. Senator Quorum, if it's digital, though, it may be able to do that very soon. The motion is the passage of House Bill 1154. Are there any no votes? Senators Sonnenberg, Priola, Minority Leader Holbert, Lundin, Woodward. With a vote of 30 ayes, 5 noes, 0 absence, 0 excused, House Bill 1154 is passed. Co-sponsors. Senators Liston. Majority Leader Moreno. Hmm. Will the clerk please read the title to House Bill 1241. House Bill 1241, Representative Byrd, Senator Lee, concerning the creation of a court-appointed special advocate special license plate and in connection therewith making an appropriation. Senator Lee. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I move uh, House Bill 1241 on third reading and final passage and ask for an aye vote. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, the motion is the passage of House Bill 1241. Are there any no votes? Senators Lundin, Sonnenberg, Woodward, Priola, Minority Leader Holbert. With a vote of 30 ayes, Five no's, zero absence, zero excused. House Bill 1241 is passed. Co-sponsors. Senators, Majority Leader Moreno. Will the clerk please read the title to House Bill 1298. House Bill 1298, Representative Mullica, Senator Hawkes Lewis and Henriksen concerning a transfer from the General Fund to the Division of Professions and Occupations Cash Fund in the 2022-23 state fiscal year to facilitate fee relief for health care providers regulated by the State Board of Nursing. Senator Henriksen. Thank you, Mr. President. I move House Bill 1298 on third read and final passage. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, the motion is the passage of House Bill 1298. Are there any no votes? Senators Lundin, Liston, Kirkmeyer, Smallwood, Woodward, Minority Leader Holbert. With a vote of 29 ayes, 6 noes, 0 absent, 0 excused, House Bill 1298 is passed. Co sponsors. Senators Kolker, Majority Leader Moreno, Fields, Gonzalez, Zenzinger, Winter, Janal, Lee, Buckner, Pedersen. Uh, Bridges, Coleman, Sonnenberg, Priola. Please add the president. Will the clerk please read the title to Senate Bill 197. Senate Bill 197, Senators Coleman and Hanson, Representative Bacon, concerning authorizing alternative governance for innovation school zones. Senator Coleman. Thank you, Mr. President. We move Senate Bill 197 on third reading and final passage. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, the motion is for the passage of Senate Bill 197. Are there any no votes? Senators, Jaquez Lewis, Rodriguez, Henriksen, Kolker, Gonzalez, Winter, Danielson, St Story, with a vote of 27 ayes, 8 no, 0 absent, 0 excused. Senate Bill 197 is passed. Co-sponsors. Senators Lundin, Minority Leader Holbert, Cook, Liston, Heise, Sonnenberg, Kirkmeyer, Woodward, Rankin, Priola, Smallwood, Gardner, Bridges,
General orders, second reading of bills. Senator Coleman. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the Senate resolve the Southern Committee to hold for consideration of general orders, second reading of bills. You have heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and that motion is adopted. The Senate will resolve itself into the Committee of the Whole for the consideration of the general order, second reading of bills, and Senator Coleman will take the chair. Committee will come to, the committee will come to order, and the court rule is relaxed. Will the clerk please read the title to House Bill 1155? House Bill 1155, Representatives Will McCluskey, Senators Gonzalez and Moreno, concerning in-state tuition classification and institutions of higher education for students who complete high school in Colorado. Senator Gonzalez. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. We move House Bill 1155 on second reading, and uh, we do have an amendment. There's an amendment at the desk. Would the clerk please read L002? Amendment L002 by Senator, Senator Gonzalez. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I do just want to take a moment uh, to uh, read in uh, its entirety um, the intent behind this L002. We'd like to reamend, uh, I'm sorry, amend the reengrossed bill at page two, line three, and after 2.5, insert uh, and six, and after, at page four, after line seven, we'd like to insert this following language. We'd like to insert the language to acknowledge that the short title of this section is the Representative Val Vigil Asset Act. Co colleagues, um, you all may remember Representative Val Vigil, um, who passed away in February of last year. He was a staunch champion on this issue and advocate uh, for immigrant students, and I'll turn it over uh, to my co-prime sponsor. Mr. Majority Leader. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and we do move Amendment L002. Um, and to this amendment, colleagues, uh, Representative Val Vigil, who, uh, as uh, the Senator from Denver mentioned, uh, did pass away, was my predecessor in the House, represented the district that I represented in the House, and every year that he was a member of this General Assembly, he introduced a bill to provide in-state tuition for undocumented students. Um, that finally culminated in 2013 when we were able to pass assets. So I think it's only appropriate that this section of statute include a short title that bears his name and encourage your I vote. The motion is, the motion is the passage, passage of L002. All those say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have an L002 is adopted to the bill. Seeing a further discussion, the motion is the passage of House Bill 1155. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. 1155 is passed. Mr. Majority Leader. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I move to lay over House Bill 1272 to the end of the calendar. The motion is to lay over House Bill 1272 to the end of the calendar. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. And 1272 be laid over to the end of the calendar. <laughs> Will the clerk please read the title? of Senate Bill 005. Senate Bill 005, Senators Bridges and Cook, Representative Roberts, concerning the increase of available funds for law enforcement agency peace officer services. We do. Senator Bridges. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move Senate Bill 5 and the appropriate committee reports. To the Judiciary Committee report, Senator Bridges. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We uh, focused this bill away from the overall grant program to support uh, law enforcement folks across the state to just focus in on that critically important behavioral health piece in the bill and ask for an I vote on the committee report. The motion is a passage of the Judiciary Committee report. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have a judiciary, the judiciary Committee report is adopted. Aye. To the Appropriations Committee report, Senator Bridges. Thank you, Mr. Chair. In the Appropriations Committee, we appropriately appropriated the appropriate appropriation. That is appropriate. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, the motion is the adoption of the Appropriations Committee report. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the committee report's adopted. There's an amendment at the desk. Would the clerk please read Amendment L005? 
Amendment L005. Senator Bridges. Thank you, Mr. Chair. L005 makes sure that this program runs for three years. There are concerns about continuous appropriations uh, coming from the Appropriations Committee. As appropriate, we have responded to those and are making sure that this is just that three years, but with the rollover authority, because these are grants to local governments that have a different calendar, different fiscal calendar than the state does, having that continuous appropriation is really critical for ensuring the right people are getting these funds. The motion is the adoption of L005. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. L005 is adopted. Any further to Senator Cook? Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. Uh, we move Senate Bill 5 and ask for an aye vote. The motion is the passage of Senate Bill 5. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and 005 is passed. Would the clerk please read the title of Senate Bill, Senate Bill 145? Senate Bill, 1, Senate Bill 145, Senators Buckner and Cook, Representative Valdez A, concerning measures to provide resources to increase community safety. Senator Buckner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move Senate Bill 22-145. And the committee reports. And the committee reports. There we go. To the local government committee report, Senator Buckner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We had a vigorous discussion about this important community safety bill and we're asking for an aye vote on this bill. The motion is the passage of, is the adoption of local government committee report. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the local government com committee report is adopted. To the appropriation committee report, Senator, Bu Senator Cook. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I move um, appropriations uh, amendment 004, ask for an aye vote. Uh, the appropriations uh, appropriated the money. The motion is the adoption of the appropriation committee report. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those aye. opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the appropriation committee report is adopted. To the bill, Senator Buckner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is an exciting bill to give resources to increase community safety. We know that's a big concern in the whole state of Colorado. And this bill is using evidence-based approaches to solving this problem. And basically, the bill is several grant programs. The first grant program will give funding for multidisciplinary strategies for law enforcement, local governments, and community-based organizations. The second grant is a law enforcement workforce retention, recruitment, and and tuition program and the third grant will have a law enforcement workforce that reflects the diversity of our communities. Data proves that this is in com combination with the hiring of qualified and well-trained officers and that enhances community trust in law enforcement. Any further discussion? Seen Senator Cook. There is an amendment at the desk. <laughs> at the desk. Will the clerk please read Amendment 16? Amendment L016 by Senator Cook. Senator Cook. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move L016. To the amendment. Senator the Cook. amendment is adding someone from the Attorney General's office, because we initially had the person on this committee from, uh, I believe it was Department of Public Safety, and the Attorney General um, said, hey, since it's affecting post, he would like to have a representative on it. And so we're putting a representative uh, from the Attorney General's uh, who represents the Post Board and ask for an aye vote. Motion is the adoption of L16. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, L16 is adopted. Any further discussion? Senator Cook. There's an amendment at the desk. Would the clerk please read Amendment 17? Amendment L017, Senator Buckner, amend printed bill page 21. Senator Cook, Senator Buckner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is just a technical amendment. Uh, there were lines where there were no uh, bills that were referenced. So this is strictly uh, a technical amendment. Motion is the adoption of L17. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, L17 is adopted. Senator Cook. There's a member of the desk. Will the clerk please read Amendment L18? Amendment L018. Senator Cook. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move L018. And what this does, it adds to the, the committee a, uh, someone from higher education that runs a law enforcement academy, notably community colleges, because community colleges runs a majority of our uh, post academies throughout the state. The motion is the passage of L18. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 
The ayes have it, L18 is adopted. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, the motion is the passage of Senate Bill 145. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it, Senate Bill 145 is passed. Would the clerk please read the title to House Bill 1272. Is your microphone microphone? House Bill 1272, Representatives Gonzalez Gutierrez and Benavides, Sen Senator Gonzalez and Rodriguez, concerning the repeal of the provision awarding a defendant attorney's, attorney's fees in a tort action when the case is dismissed on motion of the defendant prior to trial. Senator Gonzalez. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Colleagues, I move House Bill 1272 along with the Judiciary Committee report. To the Judiciary Committee report, Senator Gonzalez. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. During the Judiciary Committee, um, we uh, uh, ran a, an amendment to clarify the language uh, from an amendment that had been uh, placed on the bill in the House Committee. I ask for an aye vote on the Judiciary Committee report. The motion is the adoption of the Judiciary Committee report. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the Judiciary Committee report is adopted. To the bill, Senator Gonzalez. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I will def defer to my colleague from Arvada, um, but I do want to talk about um, the underlying purpose of this policy is to ensure that uh, in cases uh, where a 12B motion is filed, uh, that um, uh, we want to ensure that people who are um, uh, going to court and, uh, and under a civil litigation case that um, the um, attorney fees in a tort action um, are assessed appropriately. Uh, currently, Texas is one of only two states. Uh, Texas and Colorado is the other um, state, including ours, um, where uh, this fee shifting provision does uh, continue uh, to exist. And so, um, colleagues, I ask for an aye vote on the bill, but I do acknowledge uh, that I see sen the good senator from Arvada waiting in the wings. There is an amendment at the desk. Will the clerk please read L006? Amendment L006. Senator Zinzinger. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move Amendment L006. To the amendment, Senator Zinzinger. Uh, members, the current law allows defendants, uh, which includes public entities and employees, to recover attorney's fees when they file a successful motion to dismiss certain types of tort claims that are brought against them. And these public entities and employees sometimes seek dismissal of these tort claims under the Colorado Governmental Immunity Act, um, also known as the CGIA, which is intended to limit liability to protect the provision of essential public services provided by public entities and, by per and to protect taxpayers against excessive fiscal burdens that would otherwise result with unlimited liability. Allowing a public entity to recover these attorney's fees in these cases fur furthers the goals of the CGIA. GIA as these attorney's fees are paid using taxpayer dollars. In other cases, public entities seek dismissal of tort claims that are so lacking in factual allegations that the plaintiff clearly has no entitlement to relief. Um, House Bill 1272 is being brought by the um, by the good senator from De the good senators from Denver, and uh, they have stated that their intention with this legislation is to be able to bring cases of first impression. Um, what those are, are those are cases where the meaning, lawfulness, or constitutionality of a law have not been decided by a court. And these types of claims are often dismissed because courts determine that there's no legal basis for such a claim, and plaintiff trial lawyers don't believe that their clients should have to pay attorney's fees to defend um, to defendants in these circumstances. Uh, unfortunately, um, the bill has drawn some opposition from um, uh, public entities in particular, um, and so uh, that's the reason why I'm bringing forward the amendment today. Uh, what this amendment does is it eliminates language in the bill that applies the exception in cases where the plaintiff seeks to, quote, extend, limit, modify, or reverse existing precedent end quote, as this is the language that swallows the rule and makes it applicable in essentially every case. Um, so 
very specifically, um, you'll see in the language um, that that uh, area of the bill is being addressed. But furthermore, the amendment also adds appellate courts to the list of courts whose decisions are sufficient to have established the meaning, lawfulness, or constitutionality of a law. And this amendment language also allows the exception to truly only apply in cases where the meaning, lawfulness, or constitutionality of a law have not been decided by either an appellate court or the Supreme Courts. Uh, for example, those are those cases of first impression. Now, uh, furthermore, if a plaintiff's, plaintiff's complaint cannot satisfy the minimal requirements to assert a plausible claim, or when a public entity or employee is entitled to immunity under um, the CGIA, yet a plaintiff refuses to dismiss their claim, then taxpayer money should be reimbursed to local governments uh, for the unnecessary attorney time associated with defending these failed lawsuits. And without narrowing this exception or eliminating it altogether, plaintiffs will have few deterrents for filing litigation against our public entities um, or employees, even when the case is of a limited merit, which comes at a significant cost to the taxpayers. And so for those reasons, I ask for an I vote for Amendment L006. The motion is the adoption of L006. Is there any further discussion? Senator Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the amendment is unnecessary. We've already taken steps to signific significantly limit the scope of the bill. The amendment also fails to take into account the complexity and organic development of the common law and would limit the exception of fee shifting to cases involving laws, regulations, or constitutional rights. It says nothing about common law causes of action. The amendment changes the bill so that only one case per issue could ever be brought without fear of fee shifting. There could be multiple issues raised by any law or regulation just because the Court of Appeals has heard one issue doesn't mean that every question about the law has been resolved. Title VII of the Civil Rights Acts of 1964 is a good example of this. The law was passed in the 60s, but the decision applying to the LGBTQ community wasn't decided until 2020 in, Bo in, in Bostock. The same thing is true at, with Donald X. Chicago. The Second Amendment was made, was made part of the, uh, the Constitution in the 18th century, but individual right to bear arms wasn't guaranteed until the 21st. The amendment also makes the exception to fee shifting apply only if the pleading is active before the motion was filed. This will encourage defense firms to play gotcha litigation. The rule is contemplated by the bill makes both parties confer about motions Often, in response to good faith conferral, a plaintiff trying to comply with the law will attempt to fix the problem the defense identifies. The exception only applies to the version of the complaint that is active when the motion to dismiss is filed. They are incentivized to hold as much information back rather than confer fully. That way, if the plaintiff's attorney does not try to fix any problem the defense has identified, they may be able to get fees based on the first version of the complaint. This is counter to Colorado's rules requiring good faith referral on motions. Colleagues, judges and them can make these decisions based on, on reading the case. This doesn't need to happen in a mandated law. Um, we ask for a no vote. Yes. Senator Zensinger. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, it, members, if you look at the amendment, though, um, it is pretty simple. It says that the subsection one of the section does not apply to any claim that is a good faith non-frivolous claim filed for the express purpose of establishing the meaning, lawfulness, or constitutionality of a law, regulation, or federal or state constitutional right, and the meaning, lawfulness, or constitutionally, co constitutionality has not been determined by the Colorado Supreme Court or the Colorado Court of Appeals or for cases presenting questions under the United States Constitution. It's really important that we pass this amendment in order to make sure that we are being good stewards of our taxpayer money, and I ask for an I vote. Senator Gardner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is an excellent amendment to the bill. Um, I, I'm not sure whether the uh, good senator from Denver who was reading his objections understood about the organic development of the common law, not a phrase that simple country lawyers would use, 
Uh, what is this statute and its genesis about? Well, cases are brought in the courts and the first thing that they have to do is state a claim upon which relief can be granted. That is, they have to allege sufficient facts that if one were to believe, for the sake of argument, that everything that the plaintiff has said in his or her complaint is true, then there is a cause of action, there is a claim. Now follow me, this is, this is important. A plaintiff has to file a complaint that alleges sufficient facts to be a legal claim. And the way they test that, the way the court, the judge tests that is to say, I'm going to read this and I'm going to assume that everything that the plaintiff says here is true, just for right now. Does that make a claim? And if it doesn't, it's subject to a so-called 12B motion for failure to state a claim upon which relief can be granted. In other words, the court would be saying, I believe everything you said, plaintiff, every last word, I believe it. And if that's what you said is so, so what? That's what a motion to dismiss for failure to state a claim is about. So what? And if a plaintiff files that kind of complaint, which is, yeah, so, the defendant gets attorney's fees and costs. Now, I know you're all going to say, well, you know, it's an insurance company and they have insurance defense counsel and, you know, what's the big deal? Well, this statute, 1317-201, has for many years operated, now on the one hand, the trial lawyers would say it's operated to uh, discourage people from bringing legitimate claims. Well, if it's a legitimate claim, it'll survive a 12B5 motion. But it's not just insurance defense counsel. It's local governments, counties, small cities. And I, I understand that all of you think, well, you know, if the claim's broad and it's dismissed and you give attorney's fees, that couldn't cost much. Well, it may have just cost a small town of three or 4,000 people with a very tight budget, it may have just cost them a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars to defend. And they might be self-insured to some level. So, this bill has an amendment in it right now that was put in, and it says, well, this um, subsection does not apply to any claim that is brought in good faith that's non-frivolous. Well, in 40 years, I've never seen a frivolous claim. I mean, I've seen a lot of them. I've seen a lot of them. But I've never seen one that the court was willing to say, that's, that's truly frivolous. Now, I'm sure some people who've been in practice for four years have seen one, but let me tell you, the courts are just really reluctant to call something completely frivolous, unless Unless it's just a wholly abusive plaintiff. And, and even then I see them reluctant to do so. That's why 1317-201, attorney's fees for 12B motions, is important. 
And as the bill reads now, it says that it doesn't apply to any claim that's brought for the express purpose of extending, limiting, modifying, or reversing existent, existing precedent law or regulation. Well, again, you know I'm just a simple country lawyer and struggle through law school twice. But I think I'm capable enough to make every complaint that I have a complaint for the purpose of extending, limiting, modifying, or reversing existing precedent. No matter how long a shot that is, Your Honor, I'm trying to change the law on behalf of my client. So what Amendment L006 does is take that language out. And now it says, it does, the fees provision does not apply to any good faith non-frivolous claim filed for the express purpose of establishing the meaning, lawfulness, or constitutionality of a law regulation or federal or state constitutional right. Well, that's a harder standard. That imposes some limit on plaintiffs. I'll be honest with you, it's not what the defense bar would like, it's not what communities would like, but at least it gives them some protection from what are essentially going to be frivolous lawsuits when a 12B motion is granted. Uh, L006 is a very good amendment, and I ask for an I vote. Senator Zenzinger. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I appreciate the good senator from Colorado Springs adding to some of the legal context and background of my amendment. As you all know, I am not a simple country lawyer. I am a teacher, but I'm also a former city councilwoman. And so I understand what the impact of this bill will be to our municipalities. And um, I think that this is um, an acceptable amendment in order to um, narrow the language um, because right now the, the exception that is outlined in the legislation is too broad. It's so broad that it swallows the provision that allows for the recovery of attorney's fees. And when you have small towns um, uh, across Colorado, they need to be able to recover those re attorney's fees. They just do. Um, some of these cases can, can literally break the bank for our small municipalities. Um, so uh, this, is, this amendment just simply narrows the language and I think that it narrows it appropriately. Under um, uh, House Bill 1272, uh, the plaintiff's attorneys will be able to shoehorn their case into this exception. In most lawsuits, whether appropriate or not, eliminating the utility and purpose of having those attorney's fees provision in the first place. So this exception needs to be narrowed or eliminated altogether. Um, I, instead of um, suggesting that we eliminate it altogether, instead what my amendment does is it just narrows it um, so that um, we can strike an appropriate uh, balance of all of the interests that are at play here. Um, additionally, this current bill language says that meaning lawfulness or constitutionality of a law has only been, quote, established if decided by the Colorado Supreme Court or the U.S. Supreme Court. The problem is, as was just stated by the good senator from Colorado Springs, most cases never make it that far. So uh, I, I feel that it's really important that we take these steps uh, for the benefit of our uh, municipalities, uh, and not only our municipalities, but our school districts. Um, this would also apply to our school districts as well. So um, I, I ask for an I vote on this amendment. Seeing no further discussion, the, uh, the motion is the adoption of amendment L006. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, no. no. The noes have it and the amendment is lost. To the bill. Seeing no further discussion, the motion before the body is the adoption 
of House Bill 1272. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, no. no. The ayes have it, and House Bill 1272 is adopted. Majority Leader Moreno. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move the committee rise and report. Motion for the committee to rise and report. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the committee will rise and report. Senate will come to order. Senator Coleman. Thank you, Mr. President. The committee has made a number of bills of consideration. Will the clerk please read the report? Mr. President, your committee of the whole begs leave to report it has had under consideration the following attached bills being the second reading thereof and makes the following recommendations thereon. Senate Bill 5 is amended. Senate Bill 145 is amended, passed on second reading and ordered and engrossed and placed on the calendar for third reading and final passage. House Bill 1155 is amended. House Bill 1272 is amended, passed on second reading and ordered revised and placed on the calendar for third reading and final passage. Senator Coleman. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the adoption of the report. The motion is the adoption of the Committee of the Whole Report. Are there any no votes? With a vote of 35 ayes, 0 no, 0 absent, 0 excused, the Committee of the Whole Report is adopted. Senate Bill 5 is amended. Senate Bill 145 is amended. Passed in second reading and order engrossed. And placed on the calendar for third reading and final passage. House Bill 1155 is amended. House Bill 1272 is amended, passed in second reading, ordered revised, and placed on the calendar for third reading and final passage. Committee reports. April 26, 2022, Committee on Appropriations. After consideration on the mayor's, the committee recommends the following House Bill 1133 be amended as follows, and as so amended, be referred to the committee with the whole of favorable recommendation. Senate Bill 124 be amended as follows and as so amended be referred to the Committee of the Whole with favorable recommendation with the recommendation that it be placed on the consent calendar. Senate Bill 155 be referred to the Committee of the Whole with favorable recommendation. Senate Bill 173 be amended as follows and as so amended be referred to the Committee of the Whole with favorable recommendation and with the recommendation that it be placed on the consent calendar. Senate Bill 191 be amended as follows and as so amended be referred to the Committee of the Whole with favorable recommendation with the recommendation that it be placed on the consent calendar. Senate Bill 195 be referred to the Committee of the Whole with favorable recommendation and with the recommendation that it be placed on the consent calendar. Senate Bill 198 be referred to the Committee of the Whole of Favorable Recommendation. Senate Bill 201 be amended as follows and as so amended be referred to the Committee of the Whole of Favorable Recommendation with the recommendation that be placed on the consent calendar. Senate Bill 202 be amended as follows and as so amended be referred to the Committee of the Whole of Favorable Recommendation with the recommendation be placed on the consent calendar. Senate Bill 204 be amended as follows and as so amended be referred to the Committee of the Whole of Favorable Recommendation. <clears throat> Senate Bill 209 be amended as follows and as so amended be referred to the Committee of the Whole of Favorable Recommendation. And with a recommendation that it be placed on the consent calendar, Senate Bill 217 be amended as follows. And as so amended, be referred to the Committee of the Whole favorable recommendation with a recommendation that it be placed on the consent calendar. Majority Leader Moreno. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I move that the Senate take up House Bill 1324, 1306, 1312, Senate Bill 208, House Bill 1296, Senate Bill 173, 191, 195, 201, 209 and 217 on special orders consent calendar at the hour of 11:18 uh, a.m. Colleagues, uh, these are bills that passed out of the Appropriations Committee this morning, or they are also uh, the bills that were listed on the consent calendar for tomorrow. The motion is that the Senate take up House Bills 1324, 1306, 1312, Senate Bill 208, House yeah. Bill. 1296, Senate Bill 173, 191, 195, 201, 209, and 217 on special orders consent at the hour of 11.18 a.m. This does require a two-thirds majority. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. no. The ayes have it, and that motion is adopted. The Senate will take up the previously mentioned bills and those printed on your special orders calendar on special orders consent at the hour of 11.18 a.m. Special order, second reading of bills, consent calendar, Senator Coleman. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the Senate resolve itself in the Committee of the Whole for consideration of special order, second reading of bills, consent calendar. You have heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. 
Opposed, no. The motion is adopted, and the Senate will resolve itself into the Committee of the Whole for the consideration of the special order, second reading of bill's consent calendar, and Senator Coleman will take the chair. The committee will come to order and the court rules relax. Would the clerk please read the title of all the bills in a special order, second reading of bill's consent calendar. House Bill 1324, Representative Burnett and Lynch, Senators Woodward and Rodriguez, concerning a modification to the definition of a pawnbroker. House Bill 1306, Representative Tatona Baisley, Senators Bridges and Perilla, concerning broadband deployment grant processes implemented by the Broadband Deployment Board. House Bill 1312, Representatives Lynch and Woodrow, Senators Moreno and Woodward, concerning modification to sales tax statutes in order to address certain defects and anachronisms. Senate Bill 208, Senators Winter and Simpson, Representatives Lynch and Roberts, concerning just compensation for the condemnation of property encumbered by a conservation easement in Gross. House Bill 1296, by Representatives Mullica and Van Winkle, Senator Priola, concerning the definition of a nursing home for purposes of the residential rural property classification. Senate Bill 173, Senators Rodriguez and Smallwood, concerning criteria related to the operation of telepharmacy outlets. Senate Bill 191, Senators Bridges and Piola, Representative Titone and Burnett, concerning the procurement of information technology resources. Senate Bill 195, Senators Donovan and Sonnenberg, concerning modifications to the Conservation District Grant Fund. Senate Bill 201, by Senators Lee and Gardner, Representative Wiseman, concerning independent oversight of matters concerning judicial discipline. Senate Bill 209, Senators Donovan and Sonnenberg, Representatives Roberts and Pelton concerning expanding small meat processing in Colorado by providing business application assistance to obtain capital. Se Senate Bill 217, Senators Hansen and Zenzinger, Representatives Herod and Ransom concerning motor vehicle related programs that benefit persons with disabilities and in connection therewith making an appropriation. Majority Leader Moreno. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, there has been a request to remove Senate Bill 173 from the consent calendar that will be added to the special order second reading of bills calendar. Um, when I make that motion shortly. So, Mr. Chair, um, I move for the passage of the remaining bills on the consent calendar uh, and their associated committee reports, which includes House Bill 1324, no committee report, House Bill 1306, no committee report, House Bill 1312, no committee report, Senate Bill 208, no committee report, House Bill 1296, no committee report, Senate Bill 191 and the Associated Business, Labor and Technology and Appropriations Committee reports, Senate Bill 195 and the Associated Agricultural and Natural Resources Committee report, Senate Bill 201 and the Associated Judiciary and Appropriations Committee reports, Senate Bill 209 and the Associated Appropriations Committee report, and Senate Bill 217 and the Associated Appropriations Committee report. Any discussion in the committee reports? Motion for the body's adoption of all the committee reports and the special order, second reading of bills, consent count. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The committee reports are adopted. Is there any discussion on any of the bills in the consent calendar? The motion for the body is the adoption of all the bills in the special order, second reading of bills, consent calendar. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the bills are adopted. Majority Leader Moreno. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move the committee rise and report. Motion for the committee, and motions for the committee to rise and report. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the motion is adopted. The committee will rise and report. Senate will come to order. Senator Coleman. Thank you, Mr. President. The committee has had a number of bills under consideration. Will the clerk please read the report? Mr. President, your committee, the whole beds leave to report it, has had under consideration the following attached bills, meaning the second reading thereof, and makes the following recommendations thereon. Senate Bill 208, Senate Bill 191 is amended, Senate Bill 195 is amended, Senate Bill 201 is amended, Senate Bill 209 is amended, Senate Bill 217 is amended, passed on second reading in order and gross and place on calendar for third reading and final passage. House Bill 1324, House Bill 1306, House Bill 1312, House Bill 1296, passed on second reading in order to devise and place on the calendar for third reading and final passage. Senator Coleman. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the report. The motion is the adoption of the Committee of the Whole Report. Are there any no votes? With a vote of 
35 ayes, zero no, zero absent, zero excused. The committee of the whole report is adopted. Senate Bill 208, Senate Bill 191 is amended, Senate Bill 195 is amended, Senate Bill 201 is amended, Senate Bill 209 is amended, Senate Bill 217 is amended, passed. On second reading, order in gross and placed on the calendar for third reading and final passage. House Bills 1324, 1306, 1312, and 1296 passed on second reading and ordered, revised, and placed on the calendar for third reading and final passage. Majority Leader Moreno. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I move that the Senate take up Senate Bill 124, Senate Bill 202, and Senate Bill 173 on special orders at the hour of 11.25 a.m. Colleagues, as you remember, Senate Bill 173 was pulled off consent, so it will be added to the regular, excuse me, the special orders calendar. The motion is that the Senate take up Senate Bills 124, 202, and 173 on special orders. If the hour of 11.25 a.m., this does require a two-thirds majority. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it. That motion is adopted. The Senate will take up Senate Bill 124, 202, and 173 on special orders at the hour of 11.25 a.m. Special order, second reading of bills. Senator Coleman. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the Senate resolve itself in the Committee of the Whole for consideration of special order, second reading of bills. You have heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. The motion is adopted, and the Senate will resolve itself in the Committee of the Whole for the consideration of the special orders. Second reading of bills, and Senator Coleman will take the chair. The committee will come to order, and the Colt Rule is still relaxed. Will the clerk please read the title of Senate Bill 124? Senate Bill 124, Senators Woodward and Colker, Representatives Ortiz and Van Winkle, concerning the authority of a pass-through business entity to elect to pay state income taxes at the entity level. Senator Colker. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> I move Senate Bill 124 and the Appropriations and Finance Committee reports. To the Finance Committee report, Senator Colker. Finance Committee report, we did an amendment to uh, make sure we backdated this to 2018 and also simplified the process for the Department of Revenue. And in the Appropriations Committee report, we also amend it to simplify the process for revenue a little bit further uh, and adding uh, another entity, uh, partnerships. The motion is the adoption of the Finance Committee report. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those no. Aye. The ayes have it. The Finance Committee report is adopted. The motion is the adoption of the Appropriations Committee report. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The Appropriations Committee report is adopted. Senator Woodward, there is an amendment at the desk. Would the clerk please read the title or amendment six. Amendment L006. Senator Wilbert. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move amendment L006. To the amendment, Senator Wilbert. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this morning in the uh, Appropriations Committee, we adopted a report and we have had some conversations with Department of Revenue and um, with others, and we think that it's important to move this not as far back as we had originally hoped, but instead of delaying uh, the tax relief to small business, this amendment backs it up from December of, from September of 23 back to December of 22. Motion is the adoption of L006. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. Yep. The ayes have it, L006 is adopted. Seeing no further discussion, the motion is the passage of Senate Bill 124. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. Senate Bill 124 is passed. Would the clerk please read the title to Senate Bill 202. Senate Bill 202 by Senator Zenzinger and Rankin, Representative McCluskey, concerning providing state matching money for property tax revenue collected by school districts. Senator Zenzinger. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move Senate Bill 202. And the uh, committee reports and the Education Committee Report, and the Appropriations Committee Report. To the Education Committee Report, Senator Zinzinger. We made a technical amendment in the Education Committee. The motion is the adoption of the Education Committee Report. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. Education, education Committee Report is adopted. To the Appropriations Committee Report, Senator Zinzinger. We significantly amended the appropriation uh, from 169 million down to 20 million, and we asked for an I vote. Motion is the adoption of the appropriation committee report. All those in favor say aye. 
Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The appropriation committee report is adopted. There's a member of the desk. Would the clerk please read L002? Amendment L002 by Senator Zenzinger, amended Education Committee report dated April 21st, 2022, page one after line Senator eight. Page Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move Amendment L002. To L002. Senator Zenzinger. This is another technical amendment. We ask for an I vote. The motion is the adoption of L002. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. L002 is adopted. Any further discussion on Senate Bill 202? Seeing none, the motion is the passage of Senate Bill 202. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and 202 is adopted. Would the clerk please read the title of Senate Bill 173? Senate Bill 173, Senators Rodriguez and Smallwood, concerning criteria relating to the operation of telepharmacy outlets. Senator Smallwood. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. We move Senate Bill 173 and the Business, Labor, and Technology Committee report. To the BLT Committee report, Senator Smallwood. Mr. Chair, Smallwood. also move the uh, committee report from the Committee on Finance. And appropriations. And appropriations. Is there? Hold on. We just did appropriations. A lot, a lot of work being done on this bill. Is that, is it, <laughs> we good? And a lot the, of work being done the, on this bill. <laughs> and the appropriations committee report. There we are. All right. To the Business, Labor, and Technology Committee report, Senator, Senator Smallwood. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and the Business, Labor, and Technology Committee report um, made a number of uh, changes, particularly around defining the area of need, and uh, would ask for your I vote on the committee report. The motion is the adoption of the Business, Labor, and Technology Committee report. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the Business, Labor, and Technology Committee report is adopted. To the Finance Committee report, Senator Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I move for the adoption of the finance report. In there, we just did a technical amendment. The, some of the wordings were the A, Bs, the subsets of A and B changing it. None of that was changing any part of the policy. It was just corrections on the bill. Motion is the adoption of the finance committee report. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The finance committee report is adopted. To the appropriation committee report, Senator Smallwood. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. In the appropriations committee report, we appropriated the money knowing that most of what you see on the fiscal note is actually in cash funds. Motion is the adoption of the appropriation committee report. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The appropriation committee report is adopted. To the bill, Senator Smallwood. Senator Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Colleagues, um, as you heard, three committee reports before we got here. Uh, this bill came out of consent in every committee that it's been through. Um, so we have worked on a lot of stuff. We've had some discussions with Dora, but basically what these does for 15, 20 years, we've had telepharmacy in Colorado. What we had was a 20 mile radius requirement, which in the whole time since we've had telepharmacy, we've only added one telepharmacy to the state of Colorado. What this bill did was remove the 20 mile radius to give access in some of the rural communities where we need access to telepharmacy. Um, what we, discussions with the pharmacies and the pharmacists was to add a need based to set, to, to require the Board of Pharmacy to do a needs-based assessment to see where these places can be placed. So they're not just open willy-nilly. There has to be a needs assessment done by the board. They've had the authority to do this since the bill's been in, since the law's been implemented and have never done it. So what we did is we changed it to they shall do a needs assessment. Um, we have, telepharmacy is not telehealth, telemedicine. This is not direct contact with the patient. This is a, techno a technology advancement where a pharmacist can observe a tech via iPad or some kind of secure system to observe to make sure they're filling the pharmacies. There's controls, there's requirements for this to be done. Um, this is happening in a lot of states and it's gonna help us to provide access in some of the rural communities and places that have needs for more uh, access to pharmaceuticals. Senator Smallwood. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, and oh, thank you to- move the, move the bill. Um, Did we move the bill? Move the bill. Oh, yeah. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Appreciate the comments from the senator from Denver on this. Just to remind um, everybody in the chamber, this is something that is already law in the state of Colorado. We are not creating telepharmacy in the state. It's already a law. We already have a telepharmacy. There are already rules um, around it, governing it. So it is, it is definitely not a new concept. What we're trying to do is simply expand it. The senator from Denver mentioned rural areas, and I think that's appropriate. But remember, today there's a 20-mile restriction. Um, if we're going to drive from uh, 20 miles from where we are right now, that would get you into Parker, Colorado. 20 miles is a long way to go. So when we're talking about our citizens who 
need to rely on public transportation, need to rely on family taking them from one location to the other. Uh, 20 miles, we feel, is a really, really long way to go for somebody to access their necessary, in some cases, life-saving prescription drugs. So we really view this as not only um, an access to health care bill, but also an affordability of, of health care bill. And we'd ask for your I vote on Senate Bill 173. Senator Hawkins Lewis. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I thank the colleagues for working on this. Um, I actually had uh, asked for this bill to re be removed from the consent calendar because there is a bit of a concern, <laughs> a bit of concern around um, who could qualify to use uh, telepharmacy. Uh, this really would make it any single dock in the box, any clinic, any, any place really in Colorado uh, that is um, a health, called a healthcare facility could use this. So I'm not gonna run my amendment today um, because I think there is a lot of work that needs to be done and hopefully it can be done in the house um, we will be communicating with the house sponsors on how to fix this i'm also doing a shout out to dora because we do need to get some um, clarifying language around what is happening is we have large corporations that want to be involved in telepharmacy and we do not want to do anything to put our rural pharmacies at risk. So we want some clarifying language from Dora to make sure that our rural pharmacies are being protected. That is my concern. That's the reason why I asked for it to be removed. I thank the sponsors for having a lovely conversation about it. And uh, I'm sure the conversation will continue. Thank you, colleagues. Senator Rodriguez. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you for the good senator from Longmont. Thank you for the discussion on the side. Um, we have talked with Dora. We, are, we have patiently been waiting for clarifying language. Um, we also have patiently been frustrated that we haven't got clarifying language. But I appreciate you withdrawing to continue the discussion because we're always happy to have discussions. Like I said, we've had discussions in every committee and we had a long, lengthy discussion with Dora last week, hoping they would get us wording before we got here. But a loss, it did not happen. So thank you for the discussion. Senator Smallwood. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And just briefly, I also want to thank, thank the Senator from Boulder County as well. We have committed to continue to work on the bill as we have uh, since it was introduced. So um, we're certainly not trying to dig in one way or the other, but would um, do appreciate the uh, ability for this bill to move forward, knowing that we can address things in, in the House once we hear back from the department with their recommendation on exactly what that clarifying language should look like. Seeing no further discussion, the motion is the passage of Senate Bill 173. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it in 173 is passed. Majority Leader Moreno. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move the committee rise and report. Motion for the committee to rise and report. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the committee will rise and report.
The Senate will come to order. Senator Coleman. Thank you, Mr. President. The committee has met and had a number of bills in consideration. Would the clerk please read the report? Mr. President, your committee of the whole begs leave to report it has had under consideration the following attached bills being the second reading thereof and makes the following recommendations thereon. Senate Bill 124 is amended, Senate Bill 202 is amended, Senate Bill 173 is amended, passed on second reading and ordered in gross and placed on the calendar for third reading and final passage. Senator Coleman. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the adoption of the report. The motion is the adoption of the committee of the whole report. Are there any no votes? With a vote of 35 ayes, zero no, zero absent, zero excused. The Committee of the Whole Report is adopted. Senate Bill 124 is amended. Senate Bill 202 is amended. Senate Bill 173 as amended. Passed and second reading ordered engrossed and placed on the calendar for third reading and final passage. Message from the House. April 26, 2022, the House has passed on third reading and transmitted through the Revised of Statutes. House Bill 1285 amended as printed in House Journal April 22, 2022, and as amended on third reading and printed in House Journal April 26, 2022, the House has passed on third reading and transmitted to the Revised of Statutes. Senate Bill 110 amended as printed in House Journal April 22, 2022, the House has passed on third reading and returns herewith. Senate Bills 167, 058, 164, 079, and 156. Announcements. Senator Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to make some announcements for tomorrow, Wednesday's 1.30 BLT, BLT committee. Um, we will be hearing House Bill 1317, 1347, Senate Bill 228, Senate Bill 229, and Senate Bill 230. Be there or be square. Wow. Senator Zenzinger. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, members, I'm going to ask for a moment of personal privilege. Granted. Uh, members, I just wanted to um, convey uh, some sad and news that I'm sure you've all already heard about um, regarding um, former Senator, Councilman, uh, and uh, City Auditor Dennis Joseph Patrick Gallagher, who passed away over the weekend. I know that we are working to coordinate um, a fitting tribute of Senator Gallagher, that's how I knew him, um, uh, at an appropriate time. But I didn't want a day, another day to go by. I, I meant to say something uh, yesterday about truly uh, an amazing man, a wonderful character, um, a, a really civic-minded person who dedicated his entire life to service. And um, I just wanted to um, note his passing today um, because I think it's fitting. Um, when I uh, came from the Western Slope over here to the Front Range to attend college, I went to Regis University and uh, I had Senator Gallagher as a professor and that was my first introduction to him. And he became a good friend, uh, a good mentor. Um, he would always chip in $10 to any campaign that I ran in. <laughs> and, uh, but, but it was always a reliable $10, I will tell you that. And um, he was just bigger than life. Um, I worked for a brief uh, time in the alumni office at Regis University, and we used to have um, alumni that would come back to Regis just so they could visit with Dennis Gallagher. Uh, that was the whole reason that they came back for their reunion. Um, and he, he worked very closely with us uh, in the alumni office, offering to take um, alumni on tours of North Denver. He would give historic tours. He was literally in charge of our pub crawl. Um, and he would always provide um, a, a bit of poetry and uh, wonderful uh, calligraphy notes um, uh, constantly. And he was just a wonderful man. Um, and I, I just didn't want another day to go by without um, uh, commenting on his passing. And then also uh, wanted to let people know that there will be a mass that will be said uh, for him on Saturday, April 30th at 11 a.m. at St. Dominic's Church um, over on Federal Boulevard in Denver. 
And then uh, in lieu of flowers, um, that they ask that contributions be made to the Megan Gallagher Scholarship Fund at Regis University in, in his honor. And Megan was his, his daughter who passed away a number of years ago. And um, uh, I, I just encourage people to um, hold uh, Dennis and his family in your hearts today. Thank you. Senator Gonzalez. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. And I request a moment of personal privilege. Granted. Thank you. Um, colleagues, we will have an opportunity, um, hopefully, uh, to uh, appropriately um, acknowledge Senator Gallagher for all of the work and service um, that he provided, not only to our state, um, but to our community. Um, always uh, just incredibly overwhelmed and dazzled uh, by his wit, his um, love of uh, North Denver, his love of, um, of the ways that policies could impact um, people's lives. And so I, I thank you uh, to the good Senator uh, from Arvada for um, acknowledging uh, the math that will be held in his honor, and um, what a truly great man. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Sonnenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. Asked to be excused tomorrow. I have spoken with both leaders. Senator Sonnenberg will be marked as excused on Wednesday. Senator Henriksen. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, colleagues, the last two years have brought forward many challenges, particularly for those who struggle with substance misuse and mental health. The opioid epidemic has persisted, and it's more important than ever before that we are all educated about how to keep our friends, family, and loved ones safe from opioid misuse. And so I'm pleased to share that the RX Abuse Leadership Initiative of Colorado has continued uh, their important work in educating parents and community leaders about these important issues, including the safe disposal of unused medications. Senator Kirkmeyer. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> so the DEA's National Prescription Drug Take Back Day is coming up on Saturday, April 30th. This is a great opportunity for everyone to help fight the opioid epidemic by safely disposing of any medications that may be sitting in their medicine cabinet at one of the many designated safe disposal sites across Colorado or with a safe at home disposal pouch. The RX Abuse Leadership Initiative Colorado is partnering with Envision U to share educational resources about prevention and tips on how to safely store and dispose of medicines you no longer need. We are lucky to have them in the Capitol tomorrow, and we would strongly encourage you to visit their table in the Capitol basement to learn more. And in the meantime, what better way to continue our fight against the opioid epidemic than to make sure our homes are safe for our loved ones. For details about drop-off locations near you, you can visit rali-co.org. So that's capital R, capital A, capital L, capital I, dash, capital C, capital O, dot org, and they will give you details. You can get details there for drop-off locations. Thank you. Senator Fields. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I do have an announcement for members of the Senate Health and Human Services Committee. Um, we are going to be meeting tomorrow from 1.30. There are going to be some additional bills added to our calendar. And then also, just for your planning purposes, we also will be meeting on Thursday at 1.30, and those bills should make it on the calendar by tomorrow. Thank you. Senator Lee. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the Judiciary Committee will be meeting at 2 o'clock today and 2.71 to hear uh, House Bill 1326, a felon, uh, fentanyl bill. Senator Winter. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, who wants to wear jeans tomorrow? Me. Let's wear some denim tomorrow and raise some money for CASA, the um, 
this is to commemorate um, Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Uh, and we wear denim because of a case that happened in Italy where a woman was raped and the uh, person that raped her wasn't convicted because the judge said her je she was wearing tight jeans. And we know that that was an unfortunate situation and we've come so far in making sure we are protecting survivors of sexual assault and violence and CCOS is a key part of that. So please wear some denim, wear some jeans tomorrow and donate some money for the honor and privilege to do that. Sharon Gonzalez. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Colleagues, if you'd like to wear jeans tomorrow, we will be uh, encouraging you to make a $5 contribution. We've got a little money box here for those of y'all who believe in cold, hard cash. Um, but you know what? We can also uh, accept uh, Venmo and online donations as well. Um, and so uh, we encourage you all uh, to contribute to the, uh, this organization that does so much work to support survivors of sexual violence uh, uh, throughout the state of Colorado. And also it's a perfect way to wear jeans. We will also have little uh, pins for you all um, to wear um, tomorrow as well. Thank you all. And I look forward to seeing your cool jeans Thanks, colleagues. Senator Winter. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Also, Transportation and Energy is going to be meeting today. Two o'clock, we have one appointment and one bill, 1218. Um, Senator Winter and Senator Gonzalez, uh, there are a few members who have been wearing jeans all year. Does that, is, is that retroactive? So it's like $500 for Senator Corum? Okay. Senator Coleman. Thank you, Mr. President. The Senate State Veteran Military Affairs Committee will be meeting today at 2 o'clock in, in a different location. Normally, we're in Old Supreme Court Chambers. We'll be in Senate Committee Room 352 today. And we'll be hearing Senate Bill 224, 218, 135, 206, 222, 221, and also House Bill 1054 and SCR 002. Minority Leader Holbert. Thank you, Mr. President. Having spoken, having spoken to the Majority Leader and to myself, I ask to be excused tomorrow, if necessary, from floor work from noon to 3 p.m. Minority leader will be marked as excused if we are still on the floor. Further announcements, Majority Leader Moreno. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, you can expect a letter uh, from me on your desks later this afternoon uh, that outlines the process for the last three days of session. Uh, don't get too excited because we're not actually in the last three days of session, but this is uh, a regular procedure by which we issue notice that some rule changes are in effect. One of them being uh, something that the Senator from Aurora just mentioned is that committees can meet uh, at times that they don't traditionally meet. So Health and Human Services, for example, will be having a meeting on Thursday in addition to Wednesday to try to get through the volume of bills that are left pending in this legislative session. So the letter will outline some of the rules and procedures around that, and you can expect that on your desk this afternoon. So I want to give you a heads up on that. Uh, and with that, Mr. President, I move that the Senate, that the Senate recess until 1 p.m. today. Colleagues, you do not need to return. We're just reading bills across the desk. You, You have heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the Senate will recess until 1 p.m. today. <laughs>